This is going to be the next episode of God's Game of Thrones. We just looked at King Saul. Now let's look at King David. King David is the Lord's choice. Saul was the people's choice. As it says in 1 Samuel 16, 1, The Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil, and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And that will be David, you see. God let the devil destroy Saul. And God makes the next move and puts King David on the throne. He becomes king over the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God still is not present. Although David is a type of New Testament salvation because he gets the sure mercies of David, uh, David is a man after God's own heart. And he wrote some of the most quoted verses of Scripture. In his early life, at a young age, he becomes a giant killer when he kills Goliath and cuts his head off. In any movie where a smaller opponent defeats a bigger opponent, they stole the plot from the King James Bible. And you see that in just about every movie. A small person going against a giant person. They stole that right out of the Bible. On the video games, back when I played video games as a kid, what happened at the end of every level? You got the little small character going against a big character. It's everything stolen right out of the Bible. And David is the first real king Israel has had as a corporate nation under the law. And he is called David the king in Matthew chapter 6. And he is a type of Jesus Christ the king. David with all his great accomplishments as a mighty man. With mighty men under him. Also gets knocked out by the devil. Just like Saul. Just like Adam. Once again you see it come to pass. Uh, David had a little too much idle time on his hands, and he gets himself in trouble. That's when trouble usually happens is when we got too much idle time. He becomes a peeping Tom. He sees Bathsheba taking a shower and begins to lust, and one could wonder why Bathsheba doesn't have a shower curtain, but she doesn't, I guess. And Jesus said, If a man look on a woman to lust after her, he hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And what you do, what you think about in your heart is what you end up do, doing. So David saw it. He lusted. He took another man's wife. And to cover up his sin, he got her husband drunk. And then ended up having him murdered. At this point, the devil has knocked out everyone who has been any kind of king after him. Even though David is operating under the law, God gave David and his son Solomon... Something that he didn't give Saul. Something that men didn't get under the law. He gave them everlasting mercy. And this is the closest thing you get to eternal security under the Old Testament law. Although David committed murder and adultery, the Lord put away his sin. In 2 Samuel twelve thirteen, it says, And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. 2 Samuel seven twelve through 15 says, And when thy days be fulfilled, and when thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. So David committed murder and adultery, and still the Holy Spirit didn't depart from him like it did King Saul. Although David thought it should depart from him for what he did, and knew that it, it does depart from people. Back then it did. Psalms fifteen or Psalms fifty one eleven. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me, is what David said. We don't have to pray that prayer. The Holy Spirit can't be taken away from us. You see, when you run into verses like this, that's when right division. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You need to learn how to rightly divide the scriptures when you run into verses like this. But grace was shown to David because he sh should have been stoned to death for murder and adultery. Grace goes throughout the Bible not just in 
some age of grace. And these sure mercies of David have to do with the Davidic covenant. That's what people call the Davidic covenant, the establish of the kingdom and building a temple temple also has to do with the Davidic covenant. And David closes out his life right with the Lord, even though he had sinned many times, just like all of us, and committed the horrible sin with Uriah and Bathsheba. David closes out his life right with the Lord. He is a man after God's own heart, and he will be resurrected to rule as prince forever in the future. David's throne goes on forever. In Luke 1, 32 through 33, it says, He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And then Ezekiel 37, 21 through 25. Let's read that. It says, And saying to them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places, wherein they have sinned, and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, and I will be their God. And David my servant shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments, and observe my statutes, and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children's children, forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. So David is a man after God's own heart. He committed a horrible sin, a horrible thing, adultery and murder. But he's still going to reign as prince forever. But we read that David died in 1 Kings 2. In 1 Kings 2, we read about David dying and leaving the kingdom to King Solomon. And Solomon rules in a time of peace with no enemies raised up against him at first. So this makes Solomon a type of Jesus Christ ruling the millennial kingdom in peace. Because in the millennial kingdom, it's going to be complete peace. But it doesn't take long for the former jealous king to show up, Lucifer. He gets, to Sol he gets Solomon to multiply wives, uh, foreign wives who turn his heart away from the Lord. As it says in 1 Kings 11, 7 through 9, then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which, which burnt incense and sacrificed under their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. So Solomon was the richest and wisest man who ever lived, he wrote Ecclesiastes, he wrote Proverbs, he wrote the Song of Solomon. God used Solomon to pin down his word. He was the perfect man for the job because he had wisdom and he also had experience to be able to write some profound things. And 1 Kings 4.32 says, And he spake 3,000 Proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. However, the devil, even though Solomon was this wisest man, the devil still took Solomon down. And this is where you begin to see the demise of the kingdom of Israel. Because Rehoboam follows his father, King Solomon. He follows in his footsteps. King Rehoboam was a bad king whose actions led to the kingdom splitting. And after the split, the northern kingdom has ten tribes. And the southern kingdom has two tribes, Judah and Benjamin. But watch out for people like Rehoboam. They split people up. And Romans 16, 16, 17 says, And I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. If somebody causes division when there doesn't need to be any, you need to stay away from that person. But Israel has sent prophets to preach against their sins, but they always hate the preachers. 
They hate Elijah. They hate Micaiah. They hate Elisha. They hate them all. They want their ears tickled. Uh, Galatians 4.16 says, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Just because somebody's telling you the truth and the truth hurts doesn't mean they're your enemy. They're most likely your friend. And if you read First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles, you will see how most of the kings are evil. And it says that they do evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking the Lord to anger. And look what it says about King Coniah. In Jeremiah 22, 28 through 30, it says, Is this man Coniah a despised, broken idol? Is he a vessel wherein is no pleasure? Wherefore they cast out he and his seed, and are cast into a land which they know not. O earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, While write this man childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days, for no man of his seed shall prosper, sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. So Jeconiah was so wicked that the Lord removed the J-E from the beginning of his name, because Jehovah starts with J-E. But Jeconiah is so wicked that the Lord said he wouldn't prosper in his days, sitting on the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. But, you see, the true king, Jesus Christ, has to come from the line of Judah. So if the true king, ha true king has to come from this line, and no one will pro prosper of Jeconiah, this is where the Lord Jesus Christ comes in, because he doesn't have an earthly father. You see, he doesn't have the curse on him. This proves the virgin birth. Now, Sennacherib takes the ten northern kingdoms into captivity in 721 B.C. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, takes the southern tribes, Judah and Benjamin, in 606 B.C. And Zedekiah is the last king of the southern kingdom, although he wasn't really a true king. He ends up seeing his sons murdered and gets his eyes put out with hot irons. Then he's sent to Babylon. Seventy years after the captivity, King Cyrus lets a remnant of the Jews go back to the land. And this is where Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther come into play. They, they take place during this time. And God allows this to happen so that there will be a remnant of Jews in Israel when the Lord Jesus comes at the first coming. And then you're going to see the 400 silent years. And this is the time period between Malachi and the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And during these silent years, the only thing people get from God is what's already been written. No books of the Bible are written during this time. This time period is the time of the Gentiles, which started when Nebuchadnezzar took over. He's a Gentile king that took over the southern kingdom, remember. And from Genesis to the Babylonian captivity, when Nebuchadnezzar took them captive... God was trying to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth under Israel. And at the captivity, God turns his back on Israel and leaves it into the hands of the Gentiles. And the kingdom of heaven is taken away. And the Lord is allowing the devil to give out power to whosoever will worship him. And during these 400 years, the devil is setting things up and getting people ready to reject the Son of God when he comes at the first coming. So we'll pick up next time with the story of the Lord Jesus Christ.